Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I was told the most important thing of a teacher is to be able to have a, an imagination in, of your brain, what you are thinking. And probably you think, afternoon, now I'm tired. <laughs> I want to continue. This second part is dealing more with measurements and not so much with fundamentals. And it goes through different methods of, uh, uh, of, 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 of uh, dosimeters and mostly then going into the ionization symbols. And I told you already why I think that the understanding of ionization chamber is so important. We can, we can understand them quite well. We can perform quite good measurements, exact measurements, with uncertainties which are quite low. Uh, we had already one lecture today in, in, in accuracy and, and precision and uncertainties. And if I would have more time, or we can maybe we could, we could introduce it, it would be a wonderful exercise to really to deal with the uncertainties, how to establish the uncertainties, how to determine that, and how to document and what so on. So saying that the standard uncertainty of ionization chambers in the order of 1%, okay, we know it, but what does it really mean? It's not so, it's not so quite clear. There's a, there's a, there's a, again, there's a concept behind which, which could be teach, which can be taught, and which should be exercised. So the most, four most commonly used radiation dosimeters are ionization chambers, radiographic films, which is still true. When I have prepared this, it has, yeah, it has, I think, had a, 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 a larger room. TLDs, still important, and diets, which are, have a growing importance because we are getting more and more better diets. Even now we have diamonds. I have not used the diamonds because there was one famous detector offered by one. German company called CDW. This diamond detector was extremely expensive. It worked with 100 volt. And if you made a comparison, first pharma chamber, then you switched the, <laughs> the detector, the diamond detector, and you have left the 400 volt, it's done, it's over. It was expensive. Now, the PDW has developed a new diamond detector, an artificial detector, which seems to be much more better. I have no experience with that, but it's working without, without, a, polar, uh, without a, a voltage applied and seems to be much more reliable. So I think this new diamond detector is also a, a step forward, but it's not mentioned here. So these are several ionization chambers, cylindrical ionization chambers. Uh, I have now put here the chambers from PDW, but equally important are chambers from EBA. We have in Germany two <laughs> famous companies offering ionization chambers. We also have some, some companies in America, but I think it's more or less with three, four companies offering ionization chambers. Ionization chambers, they are ac accurate and precise. They are recommended for calibration and no other type detector is recommended for that. Necessary corrections are well understood, and we'll also now uh, later on tell a bit more on corrections. And they have an instant read out. The disadvantage is they have need connecting cables. And sometimes this may, may be a problem. If you have an, if you have all in ones from one company, it's okay. But if you have, I can tell you one story, which is quite nice. <laughs> uh, I will tell it later on because it was, I can tell it already now. Um, electrometer, you need electrometer. And this is giving the high voltage to the chamber. So the question is, where is the high voltage? In the 
central electrode if you have an if you have a cylindrical ionization chamber is it in a central electrode the high voltage or is it on the wall hmm? it depends it depends from the company so the EBA electrometers they have the high voltage on the central electrode uh, PDW normally if you have the triac system the the the, go, the MM connector it is on the outer wall so you have the high voltage on the wall what happens it's dangerous no because ionization chambers from PDW are made from PMMA it's it's not uh, conductive and only the inner wall is has a graphite layer so that therefore but EBA is offering ionization chambers made of a conductive plastic and if you combine such a chamber with a PTW electrometer you have the high voltage on the outside and hmm? 300 yeah 400 volt 400 volt yeah. on, the on the outside yeah which is not dangerous because uh, you, but you can feel it <laughs> and especially you can feel it if you make measurements in water phantom and you look into water you suddenly <laughs> so uh, all this is happening uh, the connecting cables required and the other point is you uh, sometimes the cable are not really fitting to each other so um, I will show a picture later on because PDW is offering any any link between any connector, which is quite interesting. High voltage supply required, many corrections required, many say quite a number of corrections are required. Film, advantage 2D spatial resolution, very thin, does not perturb the beam, is still very good. Disadvantage, darkroom processing, all this is re re uh, refers to the old version, which is not longer available anymore. I myself have made a lot of measurements with the so-called Xomat verification film, and I still think it was a wonderful film. It, uh, it was, it was, the dosimetry with the film could be done very easily. I should go back in the in the 80s, in 1984. It was just some years ago. We developed a method to apply radio surgery with an accelerator. It was really new because at that time only the gamma knife was existing. Gamma knife to buy, a gamma knife is, is, is quite expensive and it was the idea whether we cannot use an accelerator for radio surgery. Nowadays you can buy all this together. But in that time it was, people are saying it's impossible. An accelerator is so loose in its construction you cannot do precise uh, irradiations and it was still a struggle between these two concepts. In the beginning, the gamma knife people are really saying, you cannot do that, that's impossible, it's not precise enough. Now we know it's, 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 it's not a problem. Thin dosimetry was the key to, to overcome with the dosimetry at that time. With the thin dosimetry, it was, it was relatively easy to, to understand the small field dosimetry. Uh, needs proper calibration against ionization chamber, energy dependent problems, uh, needs an effort scanner. This is still true. Uh, who, who, are, who, who is doing uh, film dosimetry with now with the Gaffchromix films? Uh, you know that. And you know that you can make many mistakes with the scanner and still it, ah, it's not so easy. Term TOD. Small in size, point dose measurement possible. Many TODs can be exposed in the same exposure, available in various forms. You can even have TODs which are uh, responsible to neutrons. Some are reasonable tissue equivalent, not expensive. Disadvantage is signal erased during read out. Uh, easy to lose ready, uh, reading, no instant read out. Accurate results require QUARE. Uh, Who is doing TODs? No, yeah. What is your experience with with the uh, uncertainty? Um, they are stable. Stable, yeah. They are stable. But what is the uncertainty? If you have, yeah, the temperature somehow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. So if you do a measurement, how accurate is it? Is it 2%, 1%, 3%? Five percent, yes. That's that's quite typical. We have in Germany one guy who's claiming he can do TLD dosimeter with one percent, but normally, I, I my own experience is also that that it, it is very difficult to get down to this uh, uncertainty of one percent, two percent. Not recommended for beam calibration. Diode, small size, high sensitivity, instant read out, no external bias voltage, simple information, good to measure relative distribution. Still require cables. Uh, these disadvantages, which are shown here, may be not applicable anymore to newer developments. We have also from EBA, I think, and also for PDW, the shielded uh, uh, diet and the unshielded diet, which obviously are working very precise. So it's a, it's a, it seems good for small beam dosimetry. The diet seems to be quite good. Nevertheless, they always need to compare in comparison with ionization chambers. We can rely on ionization chambers if we do everything carefully. So it still needs a, a cross calibration with ionization chambers. So now I want to go to ionization chambers and uh, what is happening by ionization chambers uh, filled with air. So some principles. The measurement of absorption requires measurement of the mean energy imparted in small volume by various interaction processes. We know that already. And we have discussed the quantity of uh, energy imparted. Such interactions process normally result in the creation of ion pairs. We know that. And here is such an example. We have a uh, cylindrical ionization chamber. Uh, air-filled, conductive inner wall electrode and a central electrode. And I, I told you already, it depends on the company where the high voltage is. So it, it, it is, you can do what you want. So if we apply a radiation, then we have the creation of ion pairs. And the ion pairs are then are simply uh, uh, walking to the different electrodes. So the question is, uh, which which types which, of which types are this ca charge carrier? What 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 is this charge ca 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 uh, charge carrier? Hmm? Air ions ions uh, and electrons. Uh, this is what, what many people think it is, but it is not true. It is positive ions and negative ions. Because the electrons very soon are sticking to the other atoms, and therefore we have uh, negative ions and positive ions. And therefore, both carriers are almost traveling with the same velocity, because they are the same in charge. So the creation of this uh, ionization in the gas is the basic for the similar with ionization chambers. Again, we have two types, the cylindrical chamber and, and the plane per chamber. And now I want to go in more detail in how such a uh, um, measurement works. Or oh, some sentence, the dose-related measurement quantity is charged, the dose-related measurement those rate related measurement is the current. Okay. This is the dose in air, which is a charge which can be measured. We multiply this with this concept, which is saying we need this and this energy on average to create one. Uh, elemental charge. So the, the total charge multiplied with this is simply the energy which has to be put into the gas divided by the mass of air. So it's very simple to determine the dose in air, but what we are interested in is, and you see this refer, uh, relates very well with the definition. So this the charge multiplied with that is a 
the mean energy imparted, and the dm is, is corresponds to the mass of air. This is the number of this constant of this, we call a w value. And uh, good enough, this value is quite constant, whether it's electrons or photons. But it's not the same for protons. There's some changes or heavy ions. So, but for this normal radiation, it's constant. And for relative uh, uh, air humidity of 50%, it has a value of 33.77 joule per Coulomb. Next, the measurement absorbed dose in air of the, of the ionization chamber must be converted to the absorbed dose to water because this is the quantity we want to obtain, and this is the quantity which is given to the doctor, and this is the quantity which is prescribed by the doctor to treat a tumor. Two gray per fraction, and the two gray is, uh, is since 50 years it was water absorbed dose. Again, let me just say this. Uh, this is discussion because uh, between tissue dose and tissue in water. One main advantage to, to apply or to offer to work with a water absorbed dose is we can measure it and we can verify it. We can do measurements in the phantom. And what we do is, if you do a, a, for IMRT or for now for, for advanced treatment methods, we want to verify what, whether the treatment planning gives a result which, which is correct. So it is good to calculate the dose in water and it's good to measure the dose in water. So we have two things which are compared. It would be less good to calculate the dose in tissue, and now how to measure the dose in tissue. Well, well, it's not so easy. Can we be definition, hmm? can we definition of absorbed dose? The Q is instantaneous charge or? Charge, charge, charge. Average charge. Charge which has been collected during a certain time. So let's see, if you have an ionization chamber, it's irradiated, it's creating these charges. They are traveling, and so what we are measuring is current. Current, yeah? And if we have it for one minute, so it's current multiplied by time, this is charge. But if I will repeat the same thing two, three times, yeah? the charges will not be same. The same reading I won't get. So it will be the same if you have stable conditions. It will not change, be it will not change because of this stochastic character because we have so many ionizations. And uh, if you have a huge number of, of say, of, of a variation, which is a tochastic variable, a huge number, the mean will not change at all. Yeah, OK? Not quite. <laughs> we can discuss afterwards. Huh? I think average, you should say average. Because there is always a fluctuation in the charge collection. So the same thing, if same reading, you will take twice or thrice. There will be... There will that is true, of course. If you do a good measurement, you will have some variations. But this will come from the, from the accelerator or something else. Or, or say... From electrometer. Electrometer will not influence so much. The, in, the electrometer are very stable. But what if you do, if you do measurements within one wow, the temperature can change or the, some things we have several influence quantities which may change. You are correct. You have to do several measurements and take the average for that. So we are now on the point that we want to have to convert the dose in air to the dose in water. And this conversion depends on several conditions, such as the type on energy of radiation and type on volume of the ionization chamber. Though so this trans, uh, translation from Dose in air to dose to water depends from a series of influence factors. Radiation, type, and the construction of the ionization chamber. For this, 
conversion and for most cases of dosimetry in clinical applied relations is such as high energy photons, high energy elegant, we use the Breck gray cavity theory for that. Who is familiar with that? Yeah. It has some nice principles, but it takes a, quite a time to really understand it. So I, I, will, I will go into more details now. So what is now we, we introduce here uh, water, where we do the measurement, and we have our ionization chambers here. And the primary interaction with radiation fields of photons then are photon interactions, OK? Maybe here and here and here, we have photon interactions. And we assume that the number of interactions in the air cavity itself is very small because it has a density lower by a factor of 1,000. So we have almost no interaction here. So the primary interaction of the photon radiation mainly consists of those producing secondary electrons. And the secondary electrons, they go through the chamber. And these are now the energy deposits from the electrons which are counted in the, ball, in the air cavity. So we know the interaction of secondary electrons in any medium are characterized by stopping power. I have already introduced this chamber, or, or say, the, if we know the fluence of the uh, electrons, and if we know the energy, and we have the uh, mass stopping power, then we can calculate it. And here's the formula. The dose in air is the integral over the fluence of the electrons differential energy multiplied by the stopping power, electronic stopping power divided by rho, by the density and integrated over the energy. Let us assume that exactly the same fluence of the second electron exists independent from whether there is an air cavity or water. So we, now we assume that the fluence of secondary electrons is not changed at all when we introduce this cavity. Then we would have an air and a dose in air with this. And the dose in water is exactly the same with that one difference. Now we have to apply the energy loss, not in air, but in water. So this is a formula for the dose in water. And if we introduce a mean mass stopping power as, as this integral, so you see here the, the mean stopping power, the mean electron stopping power as the integral over the fluence, of, of the energy fluence times stopping power, divided by the fluence, we obtain the dose to water is the mean stopping power multiplied by the fluence of the secondary electrons. The same is true for the dose in air. And therefore, we came up with this wonderful, nice expression. The relationship, the dose to water, is the dose to air just by the ratio of this mean stopping power ratio in water and in air. OK, now. It seems obviously we are finished. We have the dose in air, and we have the translation formula, and then we get the dose in water. So here. But this formula is valid only under two conditions. And the, ca the cavity must be small when compared with the range of charged particles incident on it, so that its presence does not perturbs the fluence of the electrons. You remember, we have made the assumption that the fluence is the same whether there is air or water. So this is a condition. The condition is that the fluence of the electrons must not be disturbed by the air cavity. And the other one, absorbed dose in air, is deposited solely by electrons crossing it. Why? No, no. This is, 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 is very simple, but it's, it's, I think, quite important. We have used the concept of, of stopping power. That is, we calculate the energy 
by the stopping power. That means energy loss per length. But if they are stopped, it does not. It has some remaining. So the, the complete energy is going in. And, 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 and the correct characterization of the energy which is absorbed is not the energy loss. It's a total energy entering. Yeah? So this concept, it's very important to, to understand this. This concept, which is this is well known, this is a normal, I think all of you know this formula, only works for crossers. Yeah? Do we have only crossers in ionization chamber? No. We, so you see, it is an approximation from that. Yeah? So these are the two break gray conditions. Uh, uh, Exactly putting these two conditions together, break gray theory provides the most important uh, mean to determine water absorbs from a detector measurement, which is not made of water. So if the two break conditions are fulfilled, number one, crosses only and no perturbation of the fluids, these two things, then the dose in water is given by this formula. This is under break gray conditions. But you have already seen, it, it is not completely true. So in order to do it exactly, and really to understand this transition from those to air to those to water, we have to do something else. This assumption that this is true is, has an uncertainty of, a, of a, maybe a few percent. So it, it is not exact. So to do it more exact, we have to discuss the question uh, what's going on in, in this air cavity with electron tracks. So we have here crosser, we have stoppers, we have uh, starters, which may come, and we can even have uh, insiders. In, if it's a gas, it's, we, we can say insiders and starters. Okay, but we also have to take into account that an electron can make a knock-on process, so it will get the energy to another electron, and it will create really a, a, a further track of electrons, which are called delta electrons. And these delta electrons are symbolized here with this way. In a very good approximation, we can neglect photon interaction within the cavity. So we, and we will throw them away. This is, if we throw this away, it is a very good approximation. In a very good approximation, all the fluence of the pure crossers and stoppers is not changed. This is a very famous principle in, 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 uh, in, in the theory. The fluence of, of particles, say electron bonds, is not changed by the density. So it's independent of the density. The, the absorbed dose is different if, if it's a high density or low density. Of course, the absorption is different, but the fluence is not changed. And why? You can imagine there's two processes which are responsible for the fluence. The one is creation of secondaries, which will be less if it's low mat uh, density material, but the track length is much more larger because there's uh, almost no attenuation or no energy. So it, these two processes are canceling, and, in, in, and after that, the fluence is not dependent of, of, the, of, the, of the density. Yeah? So the introduction of this air does not change the fluence. However, we have the fluence of delta electrons, and these are indeed different in air and in, in water. So the, 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 it follows that the Bragg condition that the fluence of all electrons must not be disturbed cannot exactly fulfilled. It is exactly due to the, to the secondary electrons, to the delta electrons. These are different because we have different production rates of the secondaries in air and in water. So it must be taken into account by a so-called uh, perturbation factor. So we need a perturbation factor 
to correct for this effect. So this is the original formula, and now we have the same formula, and just you see the small p. Now the p is a perturbation factor which corrects for such influences. What about the stoppers? We have stoppers. We can have stoppers. Uh, do they create a problem? Yes, they really do. We have to take into account the stoppers. So uh, if we assume we have a crosser, it's done here, though the energy, and this is the entrance energy of an electron, this is the track length, and the energy imparted is simply the electronic stopping power multiplied by D. Okay, this is the definition of stopping power. If we have a, 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 a stopper, the energy imparted is simply the incoming energy. You see the difference between them. So therefore, the calculation of those using the stopping power according to this formula only works for crosses. As a consequence, the calculation of the ratio of the mean energy collision stopping power also works only for crosses. So this works only for crosses. And again, we need some correction for the stoppers. This is done by something which you have certainly heard, the spencer Etix uh, stopping power ratio. Are you f have, you, have you heard about that? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. That's a formula, yeah. But what does it mean? I think the most important thing is that it takes into account the stoppers. So the ratio is given by a, very, a complicated, this is a calculation of the stopping power ratio which we need to translate those from air to those to water. We need such spencer attic stopping power ratios. And if you look into the textbooks or you look in the TRS document, you almost find the spencer attic uh, stopping power ratios. And what you have here, you have this, which is very similar to, to, to the stopping power of fluence times, this is another expression for stopping power, but you have here, one term which is taking into account the stoppers. So a summary of this is now, this is our really true translation. The dose in water is the measured charge divided by the air, the W value, the Spencer ethics, stopping power ratio, and a perturbation factor. Now we are ready. Now we if we, know, if, we, if we would know this, this, this uh, uh, quantity perturbation factor, we would, would be ready. And I can again refer to a dosimetry protocol like the famous TRS-398. You will find the stopping power ratios uh, according to Spencer ethics, and you will also find the perturbation factors, which are different for cobalt-60 for electrons for, for photons. So I think this is now, I'm ready with my fundamental talk. Now I will go to the next one, or we can make a small, how long, how long the time? Uh, 15. We can make just a few, a small break just to breathe. <laughs> I will go now to the next um, talk, which is dealing with the calibration details performing a measurement with photons.